Namaste, beautiful souls, friends and family, Venus lovers. Welcome back to my channel. It's Dr. Danny, physician astrologer. Today, we're going to do a forensic astrology report. Uh, just a few days ago, a very odd, very erratic, very crazy and horrible event happened in the United States of America. Uh, while our former president, Donald Trump, was at a rally, uh, someone attempted to take his life. Uh, the person that uh, fired first is now deceased, and we are going to take a look at that person's chart. Uh, in this video, we will call that person TMC. I don't really want to utter the, the words of their name. Um, and the reason that I want to do this, you guys, I mean, a lot of times I do this anyway. I, I run charts and I try to make sense of things that are happening uh, by looking at the astrology. It doesn't always give us an answer, but sometimes it does. And I, as soon as this event happened, I ran a chart of that day. And then when I found out who the person was, I looked up their birthday. I don't know their birth time, but I was able to at least generate a chart and I rectified it to where I think it should be. So again, this is a, a little bit of art and science involved in this analysis. Um, I want to say first off that as we go through this, this is not a judgment analysis in any way of anyone, uh, regardless of your political views, your spiritual views. Um, I want everyone to just understand that this is this is purely an intellectual uh, and somewhat emotional pursuit in order to make sense of the, the craziness that happens and why do people do what they do? Um, I mean, especially if you're if you were part of it, you know, it doesn't really affect my life, but I watched it happen and something like that is hard to deal with sometimes. And can you imagine being, you know, one of the people in the crowd or that uh, innocent bystander that that got killed in the crossfire? That's that's very tough, very emotional. A lot of times we relate. We relate. You know, we see these things happening. And we're like, oh, it hurts us in our heart. And um, I think one of my instinctual reactions is to uh, pull up the the astrology and see if there's there's an answer there. So that's what we're going to do. So there's no judgments here. There's no um, morality statements here. There's nothing to you know, go on there. You you guys can go to other channels for that. I just want to look at the astrology of this person, look at the astrology of that day and see if we can make a little bit of sense out of the whole uh, incident. Ooh, okay. So that having been said, <laughs> uh, I just want to run a couple announcements by you. Um, the business and, and financial astrology course is in full swing. We are in week two. Uh, there are 10 total uh, modules or 11 total modules, uh, five in the first half, uh, five in the second half, and then the intro module. But uh, everyone's got the first five modules. And then on Saturday, we're going to meet and do the uh, two hour Q&A. So I am so looking forward to that. Those of you that are enrolled that class, in that class, we're going to have a good time on Saturday morning. It will be recorded. So if you cannot come, once it is finished, I will upload it into your module so you can at least view the recording, okay? Uh, and that's all I have right now. Those links are below if you wanna, it's still not too late to get into that class. If you're a fast learner and you can get through about two hours of me just talking to you and giving you examples and information, then you'll be ready for Saturday. So um, I highly encourage you if you wanna get in on this, the live experiences are actually really, really nice. So I think that's all I have for you right now. I am going to do a, uh, uh, full moon video for you guys. I just felt very guided today when I got up uh, and was looking at these charts to just kind of explain something, you know, just see if we can get some sort of explanation as to what happened. And then I'm also going to do Venus through Leo, which is coming in a week or two, I think. So, okay. All right. Here is the day and time and location that the incident happened. And a couple of things that I noticed right off the bat. And you guys, if you uh, practice astrology and you uh, notice something that I didn't, please feel free to comment below. Uh, just so you know, my charts are a little bit different than tropical astrology. I use the actual sky. The angles are the same. The time of day is the same. It's just, And the houses are the same. It's just the signs actually shift into their correct constellational anatomic position. So that having been said, um, we have this right here. This just brought was, it just drew my eye right away. Uh, we have 
the planet of action, the planet of war, the planet of weaponry connect in very close to an approaching uh, Uranus, which is the freedom fighter, the rebel, the the revolter, uh, brings in rebellions, that sort of energy. And so it it's like a um a military action that is rebellious, that is in the ideal of freedom. Now, again, please don't <laughs> there, there's no judgments on what this person did. I, I think murder is wrong all the way around. Uh, but this can lead someone who's maybe their their programming isn't quite right uh to take action that they think is in alignment with some sort of rebellious or freedom or revolting type of activity. So it was on the descendant in the uh, location where the incident happened and Scorpio, which is the sign of, you know, death <laughs> is, is on the, on the rising horizon. So those are the two things that I noticed like right off the bat, these are the energies that are key for what is happening here. Um. So that was that day. We're going to get back to this when we put TMC's chart with it. So let's uh, let's look at TMC's natal chart. This may or may not be the exact time of birth. I can't tell you that. Uh, but what I did do is I put Uranus and Mars in the eighth house and Saturn, Moon, and Ceres in Gemini on the ascendant. Um, just, just basically using what I knew from, uh, reports and just the public information that's available about this person and also a picture. Uh, so the, the sun is in Virgo. Um, we have the moon in Gemini and we have, uh, the rising sign is also Gemini, which means the chart ruler is Mercury. Mercury is in Leo in the second house. So what do we what, what is that basic information about this individual? So so a sun in Virgo, this I mean when we look at the highest energy of this, this is um, you know the birthing mother sky goddess being expressed through the person outward expression. But the sun is our masculine energy, it's our outward energy. And a lot of times, especially nowadays that divine feminine energy of the Virgo of the virgin mother's birthing sky goddess is, um, you know, sold to the highest bidder being ruled by Mercury. And it's got a lot of um, self-criticality to it. So that this person probably expresses himself in a way where they're very critical of themselves. And a lot of time that that comes from the energy of their, you know, schoolmates and uh, siblings. So that this person feels inferior around those people. Um, the third house is also like where you're programmed to. So you get all this subconscious programming from this energy. This person probably has a low self-esteem, at least in the beginning of their life. And if you'll notice, there's this quincunx to Mars and Saturn. You also know, or I'm sorry, Mars and Uranus. And you'll notice that this person also has a conjunction, both retrograde at the time of birth that is actually going on in the sky right now. So that's why I noticed this on the descendant in the time and date of the incident. And I noticed that in the, uh, in TMC's natal chart. So if that logically follows, you know, that m moon is over here in Gemini, this is somebody that's very emotional around their family and peers. There's a lot of injury here. Saturn is also on the ascendant. So this, this seems to be somebody who's just like sort of awkward and really, really internalizing it. And um, with the position of Neptune also quincunxing this, these Capricornian Neptunes are very interesting people. Uh, they're, they're young, so we don't know what they're going to be like in terms of their illusions, in terms of their spirituality, in terms of their mysticism. Um, but it almost seems like there's, there's a, a subtle like internal disconnect with that. Like it's about, it's about, lack it's about solitude with saturn there it's about uh just complete uh disdain for uh the outward expression of the self almost you know when when you think about it in terms of what kind of person might be able to do what tmc did it could definitely stem from this um from deep subconscious programming done uh through childhood 
So, wow. Okay. So what else about TMC? Pluto and Ophiuchus. So these people, they have a, they have a really tough time. Um, they, huh, they, they experience death. They experience the transformation of death. Um, they're able to kind of look the devil straight in the eye, so to speak, but also look God straight in the eye with whatever it is that they're obsessed with or compulsed with. And so once again, you've got to have that deep conviction in order to be able to pull something like this off. If, if, I mean, if you're a normal human, I know most normal humans might imagine it or think about doing something like that. I mean, you can see that the way people joke about it, but, but you know, when the rubber meets the road, would you actually climb up to the, to a roof and load a weapon and aim it at someone's head? I mean, I couldn't even imagine doing that. Although I've imagined many evil things. I'm sure most of you have. So it's, it's that Pluto and Ophiuchus that makes that real for them. And it's done in a sense of service if we use this placement and it's the sixth house. So that's intense. There's a lot of intense energy here. The other thing that is important to note is where the North Node is. Uh, North Node in the 11th house uh, has a purpose for the collective that may not be understood. It's, it's, a, um, it's one of those things where something bad happens, but you don't realize the good in it until much later. So it's a hindsight kind of wisdom. But it's also a knowing that even though it doesn't look right now, it will later is that forward thinking 11th house type energy so that the destiny is somewhere to make a name for themselves in a way that isn't may or may not be great. Um, you know, Aries is warrior energy also. Um, but instead of just being the spirit of the warrior, it's brought into the practicality because it's right here. It's just at the cusp of Aries and Taurus. Ooh, and then that south node is it's interesting because uh this is on trial right this is the two worlds this is a balancing between the polarity of light and dark and it is in um you know if, if we use the fifth house then it would be innocence and joy and children and uh, but it could also be ego <clears throat> so the self to the collective um this energy of always feeling like you're on trial pretty much from the time of your youth. So this, pro this person probably never really knew a moment of innocence. I almost feel like um, that they, that they were perhaps exposed to some ugly truths pretty early on about uh, the polarity of the world we live in. So, okay. So there's, there's those placements, right? Uh, with a little bit of aspect energy. I don't want to spend an hour on this chart, which I would normally do if we were doing a reading for you. But uh, one of the things that's super interesting to do too when you're doing a forensic analysis is to look at the progressive charts. So for TMC, we I've done that. Uh, this is TMC's progressive progressed chart. So in other words, 20 years of age, it's moved forward 20 days from the day of of birth. What's interesting to notice is that Mars was retrograde when TMC was born. Uh, and I looked back, it was, uh, he was about eight years old when Mars went direct in his project, in his progressed chart and progressed energy is like soul guided energy. So you feel the soul being drawn to do something. Okay. No matter what it is, whether it is your highest purpose or whether it is something that's completely evil and horrible, uh, your soul makes you like it, it pushes you to do it. So what's helpful is to take this and aspect it back to the needle chart. Okay. So that's what we did here. And, uh, this, I mean, it's going to look like this in a progress chart to have, you know, the slower moving planets still be together. So this doesn't surprise me at all. This, uh, military, action of rebellion for the collective that might involve death. So this is like just emphasized. But what you do want to notice <clears throat> are the movements of the moon and Mercury, Sun and Mercury and Sun and Venus, because those will move quicker in a progress chart. So where the, the moon and Ceres and Saturn are right here, the moon has moved away from that. 
and the moon has um, moved all the way over here into Pisces. So the progressed moon is focusing on the ideas of universality. It uh, could be focusing on solitude. It could be a solitary work that's done because it's now in the 10th house and the 10th house is your purpose. So, so the moon's not emotional in a progress chart. It's more of like a spotlight. So it reflects the energy of your sun and it's in a, uh, a full moon. So he's at the peak. <clears throat> he's at the peak of his progressed lunar cycle. So there's a soul guided energy for him to take action to towards this goal, whatever it was he's driven. So that was the biggest thing. The other thing was that um, now Mercury is in Virgo and shaming on that Venus. <laughs> okay. So, so far, so good. Another cool thing you can do is the solar arc directed chart. So, um, Everything moves 20 degrees in the direction of the sun. And again, you take it and you put it back onto the natal chart. And this is more of the ego driven energy. So what was what was the ego mind saying to this person, to TMC? Well, uh, I noticed this right off the bat, that there is this illusion delusion energy that has entered into is eighth house there is the um neptune in eighth house is like that final transcendent bliss of death and so this almost makes him like literally not afraid of death it's crazy so um so yeah having uh that it's it's like 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 he's called or guided to a higher purpose that's what neptune can do to you even though it's it could be a false higher purpose if that makes sense who um, Pluto's over the Chiron and Lilith is over the Neptune. So Lilith is instincts. So there could be some derangements here in relationships that are perhaps uh, allegiances that's causing this person to be in an illusion state. Also the solar arc, a uh, lot of spirit, which is sort of the, you know, the spirit's journey is over the North Node. Um, Pluto's over Chiron, just the wounds of the spirit. And then you've got, uh, Saturn and uh, moon and Ceres in the first house. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, I think that's where this, the ego driven thing is, is right here. One, one other thing we should look at is what, what happened that day. Like, where were the energies for this person on that particular day? So we're back to the day of the incident. And then we want to take a look and see where was everything moving? Where has it been? What's it been doing to the natal chart? There's some impactful things in here as well. So the sun recently went over his ascendant. Which, by the way, all of this is conjunctive star serious, you guys. And I just, it's sort of uh, strange how um, the series looks like a sickle, almost. Um, okay, so July 13th, 2024, and then the birthday. Did you see this right off the bat? Did you see that Mars Uranus? right over his north node it's 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 almost too like synchronous to be even real like i feel like i'm making this up i mean even if the houses weren't right even if i had his birth time wrong that energy that we looked at in the progress chart the natal chart that this is right there and then the lot of fortune which is basically the luck you're given in life this was the luckiest moment for him to fulfill his destiny, you know, whatever that was for him. And, and that's just so interesting to me to be able to see that. Now, is this something we could have predicted? Absolutely not. Like this is not a, a way to like 
analyze somebody and go, oh yeah, they're going to be a, they're going to be an assassin or anything like that. There's so many different ways that this energy could have manifested. But one of the unique things about astrology is that you, you can do this. You can say, okay, you can take a higher perspective, analyze what's happened. And for, for whatever that's worth to you, I, to me, I find that very, very helpful. Um, because if let's say it's 10 years from now and everything that's happened since Saturday, um, there is a moment of wisdom that we get in reflection where we can say, you know, if that hadn't happened, then this wouldn't have happened. Look back in your own life. I'm sure there's many, many other instances where like you thought what was going on was like the most horrible thing ever. And then a month, a year, 10 years later, you look back and you're like, right. Okay. I see why that had to happen, you know? And then all of a sudden you can sort of, you know, make peace with it. And I feel like this exercise has helped me to make peace with it. I see now that this particular soul, for whatever reason, had a soul guided purpose to do what he did. You know, whatever happened to him, whatever made him like that, he initially consented to it. That was his job. That was what he came here to do. And he did it. However, the chips might fall. Again, I'm not analyzing that. That's for other people to do. I've got my own opinions of that. It doesn't really matter for this analysis. It's just a way to maybe help you, you know, if you're trying to figure out why would, why would, you know, spirit allow something like this to happen? Why would God allow something like this to happen? Bad things happen, you know? And sometimes they happen for a reason. And so if any of this wisdom can can seep in and help anybody deal with what happened and what's to come, then that's that's my intention. That's my purpose here. So not a long video. If you enjoyed the content, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you're lurking and uh, join the Fellowship of 13 Signs. And um, I pray for all of you that if you're suffering or struggling, that your heart's be healed, that you have faith that there is a um, a divine path for all of us, and it could be different for you. It's different for me, uh, but that you that you walk that path in your in your greatest and truest light. So, my friends, until the next video, Namaste.